think they've already killed something. It seems as though our luck has changed and we're with the Sands pack of wild dogs. How lucky have we been with these amazing animals over the last few days? And they're definitely crunching on something. Although true to wild dog form, not all that much left. Hello guys, you wonderful creatures you. So for our new viewers, the African wild dog, the second most endangered canid in Africa, and definitely one of the most endangered species that we get out here. And they really truly are extraordinary, extraordinary creatures. And they're beautiful. They look as though somebody has painted splashes of color on their coats, each and every single one unique. And apart from that, one of the most exciting animals to watch. Dogs are busy all of the time. I love that one at the back, it's gorgeous. Oh, got a little chunk of bone. I wonder what they killed here right outside Arethusa Lodge. One of them's got a bit of a bloody head and this is where they killed something, outside of the lodge. Imagine those guests must have had such an extraordinary afternoon. Step outside and see a pack chasing something. Unfortunately though, true to wild dogs, I'm not sure it's going to be all that easy to identify exactly what it was they caught. And now as they finish off, they're going to be heading across to the water probably. Oh, oh, I want it. Ooh, that could be anything. <laughs> I can't see what that was. I think the calm before the storm, the rest of the pack is moving up and over the Arethusa Dam wall. <coughs> so already they're setting out and heading off once again. And I assume with the alpha female and the alpha male in the lead. Hey, what you got? Hmm? They're gonna leave you behind. <laughs> playing with each other. Our CJ, they are related to domestic dogs, but not closely. So they're in a separate genus. They're in the same family, the canid family, but they are separate genuses. In other words, there's enough of a difference within the wild dogs that they cannot interbreed with domestic dogs or anything like that. They're separate enough that they are completely removed from that genus and they actually even in contrast to a domestic dog they have four toes on their front foot instead of five but people get confused when they hear of something when they hear of something called a wild dog they immediately assume that these are some kind of feral dogs and that automatically somehow in people's eyes devalues how amazing they truly are And yet, they are something completely unique and something very, very special. They have been seen in the past as pests, something that is a threat to livestock, a threat to other animals. And as a result, there are so few left. What have you seen? I think it's going to go and play with the rest of the dogs in the pack. Look at that head down posture. It's the typical hunting stance whenever they've seen something that they want to go and race after. Now, James mentioned that they are, I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but essentially that they're likely to kill once again before the day is out. And that is because the wild dogs have an extraordinary hunting tactic. It's the complete opposite to the cheetah, the lion, the leopard, all of those creatures that you saw with James and, oh, sorry, not James, my apologies, sorry, James. Tristan and Brent after some of the leftovers they course through the bush and they chase out anything that they happen to disturb <coughs> <coughs> oh, James you want to know if any of them because the, the female at the moment the alpha female is very very pregnant and wild dogs of course are famous for their amazing bonds within a pack so james was wondering would any of the wild dogs not eat in order to allow the pregnant female more meat unlikely 
but they might regurgitate for her if she begged for them, begged at them. So when a wild dog feeding frenzy occurs, everybody has to kind of get in there as quickly as possible. And probably you'll find that the alpha female will move in as quickly as possible because she is, as her name suggests, the alpha female. But the other dogs will eat their fill as well. And if they don't, then they'll keep chasing and killing until all of the pack members are fed. But they, remember, the rest of the pack also needs to keep up their strength because once she goes into her denning mode, when she goes to have her pups in a termite mound or something like that, then the rest of the pack will be responsible for feeding her. And they'll race out, kill something, and then bring it back and regurgitate it for her. Isn't that amazing? That they are that dedicated. Whatever they killed was quite big. My money's on a Ninyala outside of the camp. One, three, four, five, six. David, you want to know, well, then do they ever get aggressive over food? Sorry, that's... Oh, we appear to be rolling down the hill. I should probably put the car in gear before I take my foot off the brake. Yes, a little bit. Uh, every now and again, they snap at each other. They'll have a little growl and a snap, but it doesn't last very long at all. It's nothing like watching a pride of lions feed. A pride of lions will growl at each other and swat at each other, cubs included. Wild dogs, they might snarl just a little bit, and then that's that. That's it. Then the rest of it is sort of handled in a very gentle way by begging and whimpering at each other, a lot of the time they'll they'll grab food and they'll have a bit of a tug of war, but it's never particularly aggressive. And they're now off to follow the rest of the pack. There should be ten of them here. Very hot? No, wild dogs do not breed all year round. They have a specific time of year where they do breed, and we're coming up to that point now. They're going to start denning towards around about end of July, I would say. And they have a very, very specific breeding season. They will den at that time of year every year, often in the same place. And what's amazing about it is as tiny as these little dogs are, and they are small, you're really only talking around about 25 kilograms. So they're not big creatures. But the female can have easily can easily have up to 20 pups. 20 pups. How astounding is that? I cannot believe we have the sighting to ourselves. I'm still <laughs> reveling in this. We're all alone with the wild dogs. How cool is this? And they go trotting towards the muddy water of Arethusa Dam. And wild dog is not afraid, afraid of getting itself muddy. They might even roll. Although I don't think so, it's too cold for that, surely. Oh, squelch, squelch. There you go. Have a quick drink. And CT? No, wild dogs have never been domesticated. They don't domesticate well. Um, given their pack structure, they have not been domesticated. You'll probably find that some people somewhere have raised wild dogs from pups. I'm not sure how well that has worked out for them, but it is not something like in a situation where wolves have been slowly but surely crossbred as well with domestic dogs. I know there's people who buy wolf-dog hybrids. That's not something that happens with wild dogs at all. And I think you'll probably find that anybody who has raised a wild dog pup by hand and had it as a, a pet, so to speak, would probably seriously have struggled. They're smelly, naturally smelly. It's not their fault, that just is how they are. And their pack is so, so critically important to them that really it would be a terribly tragic thing to put them in a, a situation like that. Okay, we're gonna move. We all know how wild dogs can go when they want to. I know these dogs are hanging out around the water, but I just wanna get towards the dam wall. So if they do decide to cross over, we're in a position to follow them. I 
I was hoping they were going to go this way, not that way. That way is tricky. Anna, an interesting linguistic distinction. Anna wants to know, well, why do we speak of wild dog packs and hyena clans? And the answer to that really is, uh, wild dogs are dogs, like you get a pack of wolves. Whereas hyenas are hyenas. It's something completely different to the dogs. And so we talk of clans. It's also such a different structure. You know, a pack is, a pack is one thing. A hyena clan is really very different. A hyena clan is all about the ladies. It's led by the females. The males are all subservient, or oh, at least submissive. Subservient is perhaps the wrong word. Submissive to the females. Whereas with wild dogs, the males are noticeably bigger. And they are dominated by the alpha male and the alpha female. But that doesn't mean that a beta female couldn't breed. It does happen. And sometimes those pups do survive as well. But the alpha female is very seldom impressed by the presence of pups that are not her own. Because it means that the pack's attention is divided. Somebody's reluctant to move and abandon whatever that is. What does that look like? Uh, maybe Impala. Might actually have been an Impala that they ate. bit tricky to tell. But Lara, yes, absolutely. The one mom will nurse all of the packs, which is, oh, oh, sorry, all of the pups, which is why it is so critical that the rest of the pack looks after her in the way that they do. Uh, AFM, I'm here with the rest of the pack, still at the Marty. <coughs> okay, rest of the people are coming to join us. We've been so lucky, though, to have had the sighting with them. So we're talking about the mother. She nurses all of them, and which means that the pups are weaned quite quickly. And so... The pack then not just provides for mum, but also will feed the pups as well. And it's something amazing to watch. I do wish we could watch that on a live safari. Right, from active doggies, let's go across to a sleeping beauty.